Hello, we're live. Ben, it's good to see you. What is up? Happy Monday, Happy everyone. Monday. This is a little, uh, <laughs> this is an interesting <laughs> way to start the week. That we, we should do these on Tuesday late I afternoon. Know. But I, I kind of like the Monday, first of the week. It's 9 a.m. for me. Perfect time to use my palette. And it's nice we have the, the whole crews here. Tom R is always, always first. I don't know. Tom R, first in the chat again? Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever okay. beat him to the chat. So we'll have to see who's up for that challenge and see who can get here first next time. <laughs> Keith and Matthew J. Ryan's here. Hello, Dale. Rich, John, and Whiskey Wasteland, Ohio. Christine, hello, dear. And Lorraine, pickly do. As always, good to see you all. Um, this, never this heard, is a, what, are, what is Whiskey Wasteland, Ohio? Is, I, is that a saying for Ohio? I've never heard that before. I don't know. If that's that's the first time I've heard that as well. So, John, you'll have to fill us in on what exactly Whiskey Wasteland, Ohio is. So, well. Good morning, everybody. Welcome yeah. uh, to the to the, the crazy show. So, I, I mean, I think if you know if you if you probably figure this out, tomorrow's election day, kind of a crazy day. We anticipated being kind of crazy in our country uh, in one way or another. And so we just thought, look, we'll, we'll go ahead and release our outturn today. And uh, I don't know. Jenna, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. I mean, you know, it's, it's Monday morning. We technically got like an extra hour of sleep. So I was like very bright and awake very early this morning. So I think this is like, you know, the perfect time to have a bunch of cast strength whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I told my newborn daughter that it's, you know, the guys, we're, come on, girl, we're turning the, like, the clocks back. And she absolutely did not care whatsoever. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like a So you've not slept at all. <laughs> I, listen, I, I, you know, I'm caffeinated. I've got the coffee. I got the palate fresh. I'm ready to go. Uh, all right. Well, I'm let, let's get into this. I'm excited. This outturn is a special one. We, we have some stuff we haven't seen in a while. Um, which is always exciting to kind of bring some of these oldie goldies back. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for that. So um, we're going to be tasting five today. So Ben and I are going to, you know, have our power hour of five um, of the whiskeys that we're releasing in the outturn. And then at one o'clock today, so just like the, the normal outturn on Tuesday, we're just moving it to today. So at one o'clock today, um, everything will go live on our website at smwsa.com, or you can give us a call on the phone and we'll be happy to help you out that way. So shall we get into this? Yeah, this is kind of crazy. We are, this is the final hour in between our, uh, before our surprise outturn release on a, on a Monday. So, uh, so yeah, everybody watching, you're the first ones to hear about it. And uh, f log into your accounts online. You know, welcome to call our team as well. We just always get so busy. There's no guarantee you'll get through, but log in to your kind of accounts online if you like what you hear. I'm very excited for I think what's down the pipeline too. And what we'll do is we're, we're as you mentioned, we're going to taste five, but before Outturn goes live, we'll put the whole list up so you get an early look at all of them at once. And uh, just a little reward for you guys for for showing up and supporting as always. We really appreciate it. All right. Well, with that, you ready? Yeah. Clean your palate. Yeah. All right. So, can try in the background. <laughs> All right. So, first up on the list is Cask 71.75. Let's get physical. It is an eight year space side and a first fill ex bourbon barrel at 61.3% ABV in our young and sprightly flavor profile. Love the name. Love yeah. My hope is that it's going to be like kind of fizzy, like pop rocks. Cause I've had some of, some of our young and sprightlies have kind of given me that pop rocks sensation. And so I'm hoping that this is going to be in there as well. All right. Woo. Shout out to Eugene who's joining us with a sipping on 7.244. We are not the only crazy people here. Uh, <laughs> doing a full, full flight on a Monday morning. Ooh, this is physical. It is, it is definitely, you know, like when you smell like a, a Sprite or like a soda and you get those like fizzy, that fizziness in your nose. I'm kind of getting that on the nose on this. It's a, it's a, it is a bit juicy. Like it's not, I would expect something. We've seen a lot of whiskeys in this profile that sort of have a tart, sweet profile, you know, yeah. sort of character. This is not at all. It's very, it's a bit mellow. Surprise, 61.3%. It's surprisingly. Yeah. 
tame. Does it does it sort of nose a bit tame? I mean, I, I it mean, does. Anyway, it's not overly aggressive. Yeah. yeah, it's not as um, it doesn't smell as like it doesn't nose as vibrant or like zesty as a lot of the young and sprightlies. This is definitely a little more mellow, but you still get that like 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 a soda, like, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh my goodness. It's too early for this. I, I got a, yes. Carbonation. You get that like yeah. carbonation kind of in your nose. I get a bit of like a honeydew. There's a, there's a melon aspect to it for me. Good call on that. Um, it's, um, yeah, not tropical. I don't know. It's not tropical. It's, it's fruity, no. but not tropical. Um, it's melony. Yeah. I, I'm just thinking of, a. Uh, Sort of a Florida orchard. <laughs> there you go. Cantaloupe, honeydew, all of those melons. All right. Effervescent on the nose is what Tom says. And I, and I think. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> What are your thoughts? Okay. For 60, I, I don't, for 61.3%, it's not, I mean, it, I think nose and palate match really beautifully on this. I think it's, it's one of those whiskeys that it just matches all the way through. I'm getting that melony. There's like a creaminess to this, like a melony creaminess that I'm finding on this. Ooh. This might just be. Maybe my it's Monday morning, the palate's fresh. This might just be the most sort of thought provoking young and sprightly whiskey I've seen in a while. This there's so I was thrown back, there's so much going on and the it began sort of fruity. The, the, I'm looking, I think I'm looking for the physical, like that the pop, mm -hmm. said pop rocks, and I'm expecting that. And now I'm trying to you know eliminate the expectation because I was going in there looking for it. Yeah. So I want to go back and did you experience that at all? Did you get the pop rocks? I'm gonna add no, I'm getting like a, it's it's very viscous and like creamy on the palate. And it's, it's, it is kind of mellow and tame in a way, but that flavor, that, that melon just, I'm getting just like, like a, a melon honeydew boba. If you've ever had, you know, like a boba with that's, yeah. I, so, I don't <laughs> know what There's only that's what one this boba reminds me of. <laughs> Um, shout out to all the Star Wars fans thinking of Boba Fett right now because I'm there. So first, first for Bourbon, Bourbon Barrel, eight years. What I thought was yeah. really interesting, the finish, there's such depth on the finish. I, I'm really surprised. I just had a little bit of water. I'm going to give it a minute. But the finish was really sort of a bit of a roller coaster. It sort of mellowed out a little bit. It's it's malty. It's oaky. It's, it's I don't know. My impression on the palate is just that it's, it's more developed than one would expect for an eight-year-old whiskey, which I love You know when you get that. Um, really, really good cask influence too. Yeah, and there's like a there. I'm finding now that I'm going back into the nose. I'm finding like a white pepper, almost like it's it's faint and it's you have to really kind of dig it out, but it's there, and I really oh. like that. I mean, yeah, how does this, so, Jenny? You're really big in this flavor profile, the Young and Sprightly. How does it sort of add up to others that you've had, really enjoyed? Is it is it pretty much what you would expect? I mean, I'm just guys. I'm just thinking because a lot of members, you know, you like to call up and order from sort of the flavor profiles that they yeah sort of matches their palate. So, so if you like the young and sprightly, I'm in the comment that I think it's a bit different than a lot of the young and sprightlies. How do you think? I you're the one who really gets into it. I agree completely. I think that this is more of a like matured young and sprightly. Uh, even though it's it's only eight years, it tastes more mature on the palate and it knows it's more mature on the nose. And I think it's a lot of times with the young and sprightlies, I find that the the palate isn't as like creamy and viscous. And I think this just really coats your whole palate. And I think that this is this is like an almost not young and sprightly. <laughs> so I think it's a little different and I'm into it. I think it's it's a really fun example of what a young and sprightly can be. Yeah, I think it kind of crosses the line with the, the light and delicate profile that we also have. It, young and sprightly is, again, just from experience here, 
got all these pink things back here, but it usually really aggressive, really bright and vibrant on, on the, you know, right, right from the start. This one wasn't yeah. that. It's a bit calmer, more approachable. Um, and I think the first fill, I think probably the, the fresh first fill bourbon barrel really adds a lot of layers to it that I think sort of aids in that, in that approachability. Yeah. And it was distilled on November 1st, 2011. So. No way. Happy. Belated, late birthday. Uh, one, day, one day late. One day late. One day late. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna. Can I read the tasting notes? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, that's the best part. Uh, so it says we popped a cork in celebration and enjoyed notes of poached white pears before we had an immersive experience like stepping into a painting. There you go. Spun. Let's get this. So good. Seventy-one point seven five. I'm going to go back to that after, well, afterwards, I think my belly is at the end, but I'm, I, I do want to go back to that to see how that sort of that stacks up. All right. Number two. Are you already on number two? I haven't reported it yet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> Axel says, Axel Anderson, comment, comments got my battle ax over the weekend and holy peep that man axel glad you're enjoying it just can't help but call out the fact that your name is axel and you got your battle axel that's amazing <laughs> glad you're loving it yeah I, you know i've been the first time we released our experimental blended malts a few years back uh, it, it was exotic cargo batch one it was it was pretty unique i think at the time for a single cask uh, whiskey club and bottler but I think the event's spot on. The, the Battle Axe is in the All Island blend. Check it out, guys, online if, if you haven't. I think it's 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 a great pickup as well. Yeah, I have a lot of people who still talk about Exotic Cargo. So yeah. I think that was, the, these have been really well received. So, all right, number two. Yeah, it's Max and Nosen already. Number two is Cask 112.63, Raindrops on Roses. This is in our light and delicate flavor profile, a 12-year Highland at 58.1% ABV from a second fill X bourbon barrel. Love the name. I love the name too. You know, I think it's interesting because we, we're calling out the name, we're, we're seeing the names and we're, we're nosing and tasting them. But we can't help but have an impression of what it's going to be like based on that. <laughs> maybe next sometime we should figure out. We'll do a blind. Uh, yeah. Like you and I, Jenna, at some point. But Tom, are you called out the last one? You're talking about how it's effervescent based on our descriptor. I would describe this one as it's definitely more effervescent, you know, and a bit floral right away. Yeah, definitely floral. I think the floral note is there 110%. I love that. See, this like Ooh. this. Takes, this like paints a picture for me. This is like, this takes me to like a place I've been before. And I really go there, go the take, us there. take us there. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, you know, in like the South of France and it's warm and you're walking and there's like, just like the walls of flowers and it's like honeysuckle and lavender. And it's just, I don't know this, this is like taking me on a mental vacation. Really beautiful. Ooh. Very different from, from the first one. Oh, you, you go ahead for I'll let you start off. What's your what's your impression of very different? This kind of reminds me. I, I think the, the floral notes follow to the palette, though. I think you're definitely getting those floral notes. And then there's also like a, not savory, but there's like a, a saltiness to this that I'm getting. Like, oh, just on the, on the finish, there's like a little bit of salt. Wow, that's... Yeah, I think, you know, we, we often talk about regions and flavors that are derived from regions of Scotland. And I think sometimes we, you know, there are whiskeys that are spot on. Other times, the, the the lines are so blurred between what is a space side whiskey, what is a Highland whiskey, what is a Lowland whiskey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the distillers are crossing those lines every day. This, I think, the, the first two we've had, though, I'll just comment that the first one was a space side from a first filled bourbon barrel. When I think of space sides, I think of sort of orchard fruit drizzled in honey. This is a Highland whiskey. When I think of Highland whiskeys, I do tend to think of more of a grassy plain, floral and earthy, you know, aroma or overall profile. 
I think that's a clear distinction between these two. I'm not saying necessarily they're f because one's from yeah. the side and one was from the land of the highlands. I mean, it's, <laughs> but, but I think the two profiles are, are pretty much, uh, would be described that way. This is, this is floral, a bit earthier, malty, a bit of like bitter cocoa, very different. I'm getting lavender. That lavender note that I got on the nose is on the palate. And I, I love that in a whiskey. I, I really kind of enjoy those notes in a whiskey. So, um, I'm definitely getting that just like floral lavender earthiness. And then like at the very end, it's like, I just get this little, just whisper of salt that I'm fine. I don't know if it's my palate or the coffee I had this morning, but it's really nice. Yeah, I mean, here we go again with the power of suggestion. You mentioned like a little bit of salt, and I would not have picked that up before. Yeah. Maybe it's just in my mind, but I, I do get a little bit of that in such depth. I think overall. Yeah, this is this is really beautiful, and I think this is probably one of the when I think of our light and delicate flavor profile and what we've had in that, like in our outer, like when we've done these outer preview tastings, this has such like depth to it. I know that word's like kind of overplayed, but like. This definitely has, like, you could sit with this for a while and really kind of dig out aromas and flavors in this whiskey. And I really like that. Ooh, this yeah, is good. This is, a, this is a flavor profile we didn't see for you know quite a while. I remember, like, all of last year, we, we had maybe one or two light and delicate uh, categorized whiskeys. And I, I love it. I, I love the light and delicate. I, love this. I don't love light and delicate whiskey generally, but when it's at cast strength and you have, like, the full impact of it, so you have lighter flavors and like a really intense delivery. Those two combined, I think it's just an amazing whiskey experience. Yeah. So I'm the, not big on this one. Really. The really. nose on this is I could, I wish I had a candle that smelled like this and I could light it in my house. Mm. It smells, it's so beautiful. The nose on this is just. Well, and kind of, yeah, just prepare for the comments now about heated <laughs> candles. I think, I think people are going to start saying that. <laughs> I wanna... That's a great idea. If anyone out there takes that idea, Ben, we were first. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Let me read the tasting notes real quick. Yeah. Raindrops dance on delicate petals as notes of blackberries and red currants join nuances of melted butter with dark chocolate, lavender, and kaffir lime. And yeah, there she is. Lorraine pulled out the fact that these candles already exist with different whiskey notes. We are obviously not as unique as we thought. Man, but a we peated red. Come on, this is yeah. A Lorraine. peated one. No surprise. I still like the idea. So okay, I'm gonna go seek them out. I think that's after a few pointed that. that out. <laughs> All right. So how are we doing? I, I'm, I gotta slow down. I'm already like nosing the third one because I just it, I'm, I'm excited for this one. This one. Okay, so this one, I gave a little bit of this to Jarrell for him to taste it before I did. And he expressed himself in words I can't repeat on YouTube, but that's what he thought of this. It's very good. Yes, he was very, very happy to be enjoying this whiskey. So, all right. So the third one is one we haven't seen in quite some time. This is a distillery we haven't seen in quite some time. So it's very exciting to see it again. And this is casket 52.34, decidedly, how do you pronounce this for me? It's not delicious. I spelt it wrong on the thing. I read it wrong. Wait, why don't you have the bottle? Dela delicatious? Really? Delicatious, okay. decidedly wow. delicatious. All right, well, ignore my spelling on there. <laughs> well, let's update, yeah. Update it. Um, but this is a 26-year Highland from a second fill X bourbon barrel at 49.8% ABV. And this is in our sweet, fruity, and mellow okay. flavor profile. Right. Yeah, I think it, it's been about a year since we've seen uh, an, an older uh, cask or older, yeah, older cask from the Silly 52. I'm yeah. pretty just excited. Really sort of northern Scotland, off the eastern coast. A lot, a lot of time when we think of coastal Scotch whiskey, we think of the west coast. The Western Highlands, the islands on the west, but I'm I'm, I'm a big fan of sort of this Northern Highland coastal style, uh, pretty unique, you, you know. But anyway, 26 years, this uh, this day just got a little bit more serious. Yeah, this one is. Uh, I I know this one, but I'm excited to taste it. Oh. Q 
Keith Richmond's on the idea that SMWS candles, brilliant. Yes, Lorraine has called out the fact that yeah, they do exist, but SMWS candles don't exist yet. So that is something that we can probably explore in our mind and hearts. <laughs> Will that materialize? I'm not sure. We're just here for the whiskey right now. All right. Just, I fixed it. I fixed the spelling. Oh, this is so good. This, the nose on this is just like, I just want to sit for a minute and have a moment. Yeah, it, it really is amazing how old our whiskeys, you know, can not, not advocating for them being better than younger whiskeys or anyway, but it's just how they draw you in, like with oh, such yeah. depth. And I just think at the end, if, you, if you're, if you're like us and you're, you're tasting whiskey in the morning, then that's pretty unique. But if you're, I think like most whiskey lovers and just pouring and dram at the end of the day, I just think there's something to be said for just having that moment of reflection, you, you know, taking that time to yourself and just, I think with a sidekick like this, an older whiskey to just draw you in. I just think that just gets the creative juices flowing. And uh, I love it. Yeah, the nose on this is, I'm getting like, um, gosh, what is that? Like pencil shavings almost. There's like a, oh man. I get like a gentle, a gentle charred wood, a bit of like molasses. It's not yeah. sweet. It's not as coastal as I thought. There isn't much salinity at, at all as, as I've kind of experienced. Mm -hmm. We've probably experienced, I think, with, with cask from this distillery. Uh, the second filled bourbon barrel, you know, smaller barrel in terms of most casks in Scotland are, are of American oak ex bourbon hogsheads. So by volume, small bourbon barrel is smaller, increasing the ratio of wood to spirit, which increases the influence over 26 years a lot has gone on in this sort of yeah. relatively American standard bar barrel in size. And uh, so I think the wood is really, but it's really nicely balanced. It's not overly oaked or, or anything, no. but it's, it's a, yeah, a there's like, horn leather. I'm sorry. You, 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 I was, I think that's spot on. There's like a, a faint leathery aroma. It's like you're walking past like a, I always, you know, mention a tack room because I grew up in a barn and that smell of leather when you would walk past that room, like you get just like that, that faint whiff of it. And there is like a, a slight charred element. Like, it's not like smoky to me. It's more like burnt. Ooh, I'm excited to yeah, taste this. It's okay. a, bit, a bit savory. I, I just, yeah, let's go into it. I'm not going to wait any longer. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm sorry, you, you go at first. What's your first? I get more of that char right up front. That is so good. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty gentle. Like, you know, right off the bat, it's, it's, um, more fruity. I thought it was savory on the nose, like on the nose, it's, it's a bit gentler and, and a bit more savory. You got a lot of charm. I gotta go back to it. I, I was, yeah, I got, that was like the first thing I got was that like char and leather right up front. But like you said, it is mellow, but that's like the first thing I got right up front. And then it just kind of dissolves into more of those, like I'm getting like dark, well, not like dark red fruits, like candy, or I'm sorry, like dried cherries. It's like leather char and then like trickles into like dried cherries for me. Hmm. Get a little bit of like um, something that you're probably more familiar with, but like but nail polish. Like there's a little faint hint of there's some sort of a, like, like a slightly chemical note in in a good way, but it's just sort yeah. of sort of. I was I was gonna say shoe shine polish. Shoe shine polish. You know, I, it's funny. I was gonna say that, but I was wondering, <laughs> is it shoe shine polish or is it because I'm thinking of leather? I love shining shoes. It's like a favorite little yeah. hobby to just de stress. But is, I was thinking, is it just as I'm associating the smell of leather with shoe polish, or is it actually there? Maybe it's like the it's like the smell of an in, like the what the inside of a shoe shine box smells like. I have one. Look, there's my shoe oh, shine yeah. box. That's right. Yeah. So I know the smell well. <laughs> so that's what I think. It's like a combination of like that leather, that polish, yeah. that it's 
that all in one. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Spot on. Yeah, Rory says, hmm, char on the front end. That is an unusual attribute. Very curious. Yeah. yeah. I got it right in the front. And I was like, that's I'm going to go, thing I'm gonna go back. And, and I don't know that I might add a little bit of water, but I'm going to go back for a second. This is 49.8%. I, I think it's on the cusp for me of, of, of being powerful enough to really kind of just lift you up and then being a little too tired. Um, so I don't, so I think, meaning I think if I add water, it might go yeah. be mellow. Uh, I'll try. I'm gonna try. I agree. I'm gonna go Yeah, I'm not getting, yeah. What, what is like the first thing you're getting? On the the leather, the leather. The leather? Yeah, the, the, the char, and then a bit of like sort of like warm, old malt, an old multi character, yeah. very warm. It's like a very warm blanket of, of maltiness and a bit of like bitter cocoa. I, the char I think is there for me, I'm, who knows? Uh, but it's not aggressive. I think that that's probably the distinction to make for, for anybody. Like it's not, we yeah, have not aggressive at all. It's, not, it's like not an aggressive takes over. No, it's just the flavor that you're picking up. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not like what's going on. Yeah. The, it, it's definitely, it's just the first thing that was like the first thing I, I tasted was just like that burnt quality, but it's not aggressive. It's not, you know, super upfront. It's definitely mellow, um, but it's there. Yeah. That's, yeah, That's I mean, I think, and obviously we got we're all sun bias, but we'll just talk about it. The price is obviously listed right there, three hundred eighty-five dollars, and let's just call it what it is. Of course, it's it's no small price for a bottle of whiskey, but I think in this case, you're talking about something that is pretty unique. You don't see a lot of these whatsoever. No. And I don't know if you're into whiskey. I think which a lot of our members are. That is not just uh, price based on how popular it is. It's just really what you get is what you what you, you know what you get, and I just think it's. Phenomenal. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm big on it. I'm big on it. I didn't get a lot for this. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm this like, is. Hold back. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm, I'm stoked for that. Yeah. So, all right. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm just thinking, like, I'm trying to hold back my, <laughs> like, I'm just trying to be, keep, keep like, a level-headed sort of approach to this so you guys know. But, but really, uh, I, I think that's one. Like, I'm pouring... I have these little sample bottles here in front of me and I have poured, you know, a third of the sample. Like that's the first one I'm going back, back to. <laughs> well, we have two more to go. So we'll see. we do. So, yeah. um, and two really good ones. So, all right. So that was, Oh, let me read the tasting notes really mm -hmm. quick. Sorry. All right. So aromas of old art classrooms. Maybe that's where I was getting that like pencil shaving kind of dusty oh, yeah. saw dustiness. Knickerbocker glory with toasted nuts, iced wedding cake served at a garden party, cigar smoke, and old ship's timbers. I like that. And I love that yeah. the labels on these are like raised. Yeah, the, can you can you show that up close? Does that translate at all? You can kind of see that. Yeah, the, you can, yeah, yeah, you can see that. You can see the etching. I just think that's great. That's in the black labels only. Yeah. But when you feel it, it's got like that super premium feel. Yeah, I really like, I really, really love the labels on these. I think they're really beautiful. But the gold and they look pretty. Yeah, it does differ, differ from, I have like a, one of the white labels here just to show that, yeah, that's different. I love it. Love, love. All right. So, all right, two more. This is gonna throw okay. The next one's gonna throw people for a loop. I'm I'm stoked. <laughs> All right. So, ooh, look at that. Look at that color. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next one is cask thirty point one one two, umami heaven. This is a twelve year space side in a first fill Spanish oak sherry butt at sixty five point four percent ABV. And this is in our spicy and sweet flavor profile. Yeah, so just to call out the obvious for Society of Return and then I'm probably saying, wait a second, there's another 30 point dot, dot, dot. Yes, we did just have our US exclusive cast 30.111. You might notice it was also a 12 year old from the same cast type and actually distilled in the same data. I mean, it, we don't have to explain that too, but it is a, a very similar cast. And we've had a few of these 
over the time. And so I know a lot of members are really enjoying this idea of, you know, ordering uh, the casts that are very similar and comparing and contrasting. I don't know, it's a fun home uh, whiskey geek experiments. This one though, I, I think this is the first, this is the spicy and sweet flavor profile. So like right away, it doesn't have the red label, the deep rich and dried fruits as all the others have been. So I'm really curious to know uh, how this compares just because our tasting panel has, has designated this into the spicy and sweet, which is uh, interesting. Surprising, or isn't? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I saw that on, on you know on our back end months ago. I was like, this is a lot. But right away, the color is, is really sort of a dark amber, very similar to the others. <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of getting like you're in a sherry moment right now, though, aren't you? Like you've no, been in. No, I'm not. Well, I wrote something on Instagram today. I, I just admitted admitted that I really sort of I don't know deviated away from the, the heavy sherry style of whiskey. I've just come to appreciate sort of the lighter styles, American oak driven whiskeys. But but I guess to your point, it's like, yeah, I, I had one over the weekend and I was thinking, okay, it's cold out. It's really good. Like this is such a, <laughs> such a harmonious like style of whiskey to have with the autumn season. Like I'm, I'm, I'm big on it. So I'm like trying to fight it off, but I really love it, so. <laughs> Don't fight it, Ben. Michael Epstein says, do I need to complete the lineup, the 109, so the 30.109, 110, 111, now 112? Well, we'll tell you. I mean, yeah. We'll tell you. What are you getting on the nose on this? Well, right away, it's it's Oloroso Sherry. Like, it's nutty. It's it, it's like a bit of, like, macadamia nuts. Um, you, you get the herbaceousness, I think, over the fruits. Uh, for me, like, it's just... A bit of clove, maybe like a little bit of um, sage. I'm just trying to think of some other, like very faint. It's very herbal. Yeah, it is know. very herbal. And then it's spicy. There's like, there's a little funk in this. Is it ginger, you think? I don't know, but That's I what? like it. It's like, like I'm, I'm. I'm, I feel like I'm literally like digging with my nose in this glass. Like that top layer, you kind of get that that sweet kind of fruity, and then like the nuttiness, and then it's like herbaceous, and then like you just dig a little further. And there's like a there's a little funkiness to this. And I like that. Funny enough, Michael Epstein says I did the 109, 110, and 111 side by side yesterday. That's fun. That was fun. What, what, what timing, Michael? This is the, <laughs> this is number four in your lineup. Yeah, I know a lot of numbers have been going after um, the similar casks. I thought this might be just based on the spicy and sweet profile compared to the typical deep, rich, and dried fruits we see from other the other casks, you know, mm -hmm. first fill Spanish oak sherry. But I thought that the sherry presence would be minimal, but it, it's pretty it's pretty strong. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and there is like a, I just looked at the tasting note on the bottle and I was like, that's it. It's like spot on. It's like a, mm. I don't, can I, t can I tell you? Oh, I don't know why not. There's no rules here. It's like, we're just, so there, just sitting here drinking off it on a Monday morning. And so there's, on. so the, this, I'll read the notes and then this is where it makes total sense. So aromas of cocoa roasted almonds followed by notes of broth and miso soup. That's it. Yeah. There's like a miso like kind of funkiness Umami and like the energy. very yeah like in the very bottom of the nose on that and that is so much fun i don't see that in a lot of especially in these 30s i haven't found that there's like a it's miso that's what it is spot on diluted nuances of hazelnut brioche and spaghetti bolognese with parmesan <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the best. Oh my gosh. Point. Okay. <laughs> Do not laugh when tasting a whiskey 65 point. Oh, the way you just said bolognese. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Like, I do like bolognese, but I'm not really that. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. I, mean, I got excited. I've never seen spaghetti bolognese with Parmesan. Guys, as, this serious you, know. you cannot laugh while drinking this one. <laughs> oh, it burns. Oh. Oh, it burns. Okay. So, <laughs> Tom R says, Ben, don't waste a drop. No pressure, Tom. <laughs> Just keep it together. <laughs> I'm, I'm off the bat. You, you you can share your impression because my first one was a little tainted. But I think that's, that's it. Like that 
you know, like when you smell like Parmesan cheese or like a, a rind of Parmesan, you get, that's it. It's like a miso, that kind of like Parmesan. That is so spot on. I think they, they did that. That's like the perfect description for the nose of this. You know, straight away, I've added more water and I think it brings a lot of that out. I've added more, I've added some water for the first time. And I think it brings more of that, that funkiness, that sort of, um, the miso or the umami character. Yeah. With water. Oh, wow. That is a, you were not lying. Yeah. A lot of dry gin. I get a lot of dry ginger. Um, it's almost like a, um, it's, a, it's Spanish oak, which we know, but it's almost like a, a American oak, uh, Sherry season, sherry season, or you know, a, a true, a true bodega cask in you know, Spain, mostly American oak. Yeah. Um, used to, to sherry, and it tastes like that. The, the sort of the spiciness and the aggressiveness, the, tan, the tannins of the Spanish oak, aren't as strong as I think they are. Maybe with some of the other casks that we've seen, it's yeah, a bit more approachable. I think that you definitely get a lot of that spice on the finish on this. So, and I think the the ginger is a good call. Like the way that ginger like like ground ginger feels on your palate that is how this feels yeah. on the palate i think that's that is spot on wow do you get spaghetti bolognese though like i could kind of see it i mean i'm looking for it i i can't i'm, I'm to be honest I, I just i can't i can't find it yet so i, I think lo i love spaghetti so when I make spaghetti sauce, I put a bunch of stuff in it. There's like anchovies in it and balsamic yeah, anchovies, yeah. and yeah, like I just pack it and I could kind of make that correlation to the balsamic, that like vinegary like yeah. note. And that is how I'm connecting this to like spaghetti bolognese. I could see that element of it, but uh, more of that like brothy, umami, miso-y those notes come more forward for me. How many bottles available? Says my cousin, William Joseph Dietrich. Um, <laughs> there are actually, I don't know, Jenna, you actually, yeah, no, I do not. Just give me, I do know too. Moment. Bear with me one moment. Um, there are, oh, actually, this is our largest um, allocation of all the casts for this outdoor, and there are 120, it looks like, or just, just about. Um, yeah. Of course, of course, we minus one here, you, you know, that we've opened and any of those were tasting events. But uh, so, yeah, fantastic. I, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the interesting, the bolognese. So that's cool. First of all, one, I really want to try your bolognese because I, I love cooking and I love cooking homemade like pasta sauce. But um, I've never done anchovies or, or the balsamic. I do, I do like more of a um, either like a red wine for I tend to cook a lot with wine. And so I go red for it. Yeah. We're getting way off topic. But. So when you say bolognese, like I, I was actually thinking of like the beef. Yeah. Um, I didn't. So I when you, I wasn't getting much of the savory note, but when you talk about balsamic vinaigrette and that sort of that that funkiness, the umami, the miso, I think it all ties together. Yeah. It, it's there, and I think it, it's more prevalent with with when you add water, you know, like more, more and more. Yeah. Good, good color. So. So Lorraine <laughs> says, by your description, you're pairing it with oyster, smoked salmon, and some prosciutto. Yummy. Yeah, that sounds so good. Oh, I, oysters sound good. I haven't had oysters in a long time. I haven't, time. Since I haven't been anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I haven't. Like, that's one thing you can't make at home is no. Um, smoked salmon prosciutto. That sounds great. That sounds the so good. The prosciutto, I think, would be amazing with uh, yeah. with with this whiskey. Agreed. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Well, last and final one. Guys, we have about 20 minutes till the release of all these whiskeys, just as a heads up. So time is, sense, but I am super stoked for this. And it's weird that I'm, I shouldn't say it's weird that I'm stoked. It's unexpected that I'm stoked for this. I don't know why I am. I just have it. It's like brewing inside of me. Well, what then. You, what's this last one? I will let you introduce it. No, no, you have, you have it. Oh, well, you've already put it. The there you go. There it is, guys. I'll show the bottle. You can introduce it since you're excited. A wee cheeky chappy. Um, G15.7. So six years. You can kind of see it's very light and green, but it's, yes. uh, well, it's, I'm sorry, Jenna. It's also in the description. Six years old. A second fill experiment hogs. And why am I excited about this? Well, I think 
I think Jenna, you can probably talk of the distillery in depth. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> it has an affinity for the distillery. What I think is really unique about this G, uh, you know, is, is the code we use to describe any of our single grain whiskeys. Um, and what's unique about G15 in particular, of all the grains, is that this is actually 100% malted barley run through a column still. So typically, when you have malt, single malt whiskey or malt whiskey, you have it's made from 100% malted barley by definition uh distilled through a column or excuse me just uh, the opposite distilled through a pot still copper pot still g15 we've given it the grain code but it is in fact uh 100 malted barley run through a column still so different from any and, and typically single grain whiskeys will be made from other grains a variety of grains you know typically so we never really see this and i'm excited because this is also a, a lightly peated malt, which I don't, I don't know if we've seen that here at the society. I, I think this is cast number seven from yep. Japan. So I don't know if, I don't think any of the others have been peated before. So I'm, I don't think so either. Total, totally unique whiskey that uh, you would not find, I think, on a shelf anywhere in the world. No. And the nose on this is so unique. I mean, oh. <laughs> So we're, you want to start? You want to no, go for it. Yeah. I mean, right away, it's unlike anything we've had. It, it's funny how it does, it has this sort of solidity element to it. it it's a Highland distiller, right? Highland, mainland. I, it's not entirely, sure, sure, not entirely sure where they're sourcing their malt from, but it has this sort of coastal influence to it. You know, not to be confused with the smoke. It's lightly smoky, but there is a bit of salinity that you pick up sort of like from the Atlantic Ocean, typically in, West, in Western yeah. island malts. I'm getting like an iodine-y, yeah, yeah. bandage-y-ness. Ooh, this is... I'm gonna do something. Ah. Just for the power of um, comparison, I'm gonna actually compare Sorry, not to take away from this one, guys. I just want to also compare from G15.4 is one that I have here, just to see, you know, and this is unpeated, to see if I got any of that character of the, the iodine, as you call it, Jenna. Which one is that, that you're pouring? This is this is what, this is from a throwback, 10 year old from our 35th anniversary. Thermon, yeah, I knew it. That one was so good. I remember yeah. that. That was yeah. from two years ago. 2018, yeah. Yeah. I just want to see if there's any any resemblance whatsoever. Like it's the there's just this like I don't know, it kind of smells like a hospital to me a little bit. So if you're into that kind of, you know, bandagey. I, I remember like when we first getting into whiskey and people would be like, Oh, this smells and tastes like band-aids, and I'd be like, Oh my gosh, that's terrible. And now I, I yeah. smell it in my whiskey and I'm so excited. I'm like, Yes, <laughs> band-aids. That's something you pick up in a lot of uh, whiskey from the th one of the three Campbelltown distillers, but it's interesting that it is very present here. I, I get quite a bit of it too. Yeah. Very lightly peated. I, I mean, in terms of we have these profiles and we have three for peated whiskeys. We have the lightly peated, the regular peated, just called peated, and then the heavily peated. This, in terms of this, I, for me, it's as light as it gets for peat, right? Okay, you're, you rightfully have no interest in what I'm saying. You should just enjoy that whiskey. I'm going to join you for a second. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's like it's incredible. Never, I mean, you would never know that was the still for a column. Still, it has so it's so rich and there's so much texture there. Okay, I'll just let you whatever. No, there is so much. Thing. I'm just wow. I mean, this just you know confirms my love for this particular distillery. But holy cow, that is. I've not had anything like this in quite some time. Like, actually, I can't remember the last whiskey I had that was even close to this. This is very unique and totally up my alley. And they use the word 
a wee cheeky chappy. I mean, this is like, this is my whiskey. <laughs> what you getting on the palate? You know, I, I poured that other G15.4 just as a comparison to, because I, I didn't remember, I was surprised by this sort of that coastal element to the, the whiskey. And, and it wasn't there in, the, in that first one. That was very, very different. This is like an enigma on its on, all on its own, but on the palette, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back in now. Actually, and this is 62.3 percent, and maybe it's just because we're warmed up, but that was pretty surprising. That was pretty yeah. purple. I agree. Very, um, I don't want to overuse the word effervescent, but I think of like a locomotive steam. I talked about this in about another Highland Peter Whiskey, but it has this sort of locomotive steam element to it. Like it's very airy, high altitude. I don't know. I, I'm it's very approachable Peter Whiskey, I would say. I agree. Yeah, this is, this is a lot of fun. Cool. Well, before the outturn goes live, shall we share the rest of the list? Yeah, and just a quick uh, point. So uh, Jose says the email had two different times for the YouTube tasting. Um, just just to clarify, I'm just actually had to pull up the email to just make sure we're releasing our outturn well in about 13 minutes from now at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and then we started this at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So apologies for the confusion. There are the two different times. One is the outturn release coming in. Probably less than 13 minutes yeah. now that we just we've been streaming for about 47 and that's we started at 12 p.m eastern so yeah let me pull up guys let, let's pull up the list let's talk about the rest of them that are coming out in a few minutes uh, bear with me one moment i want to make sure yes daniel you're right <laughs> <laughs> all right so just there's a little preview of what's coming. Whoa, no, I don't want to, I want to share this application window, not this. Hold on guys, we're gonna, we're gonna try this again. Stop sharing, share screen. Okay, application, let's try this. All right, so this is a little bit more like it and this, it's not entirely clear, it's one page, but can you guys even see that? Is that even legible? Can you zoom in a bit on it? I'm going to try to let me hold, hold bear with me one second. Boom. All right. Well, we're going to have to just do something like this. Okay. There so, you go. <laughs> so we have 16 in total. Here we go. Maybe if I just do that, actually, let's try. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. There. Boom. Look at Boom. that. You can see everything. Beautiful. Now. Yeah, that's perfect. So you guys take a look, take a screenshot. You know, you have about 11 minutes, so these are all going live. And of course, in the email when we send it out, we'll break down every one. They'll all be available on SMWSA.com. But take a look. And I guess my what's your my first impression is wow, there some are oldies. whiskeys in there. There are some oldies, right? I mean, we have 5.73. Well, not to discount the other ones, but we have the, the 5.73, 28 years old. I see 29 years old, 26, 28, 20. I mean, I, we've really pulled out some older ones, older yeah. Campbelltown from the Highlands, um, really going all, but look at the fun of the first one too. Interesting. 4.2. Very. Yeah. I mean, I th I'm really interested in this lightly peated Highland whiskey. You guys might know what it is uh, from a uh. first fill PX hogshead. So that'll be, that's really interesting. Yeah. A four, Ooh. a five, an 11. I mean, a 50. This oh, is... Yes. Look at this. Uh, Rad. This is this is bizarre. Seven point two four seven minty seahorse bandage smoke mirrors and honey. First of all, that is a name. <laughs> the longest name I've seen. But it's a, a space side whiskey in the oily and coastal flavor profile from a refill Nicaraguan rum barrel that I've I've not yet seen. I think any <laughs> space side whiskey from oily and coast. I don't know, guys. I you can probably tell I get excited for a unique whiskey. That is a total enigma. I can't wait to try that at some point. I hope I get to try it. Right. Um, any other standouts for you? Gosh, I mean, I see a 35 in there, which I'm a massive fan of those. Oh, yeah. And to see an 11 dot is very exciting. Um, that one is 
kind of jumping out at me. Oh, that's called smoke mirrors and honey traps. Smoke mirrors and honey traps. I, I apologize because I read the the line above it is minty seahorse bandage, smoke mirrors and honey traps. <laughs> okay, smoke mirrors yeah. and honey traps. Yeah. And a fifty dot. I haven't seen one of those in a while either. I think the last fifty dot. Gosh, it's I think happened. I have it somewhere in here. Yeah. What was that called? Uh, well, we've gone through it. We, we had a few. It's been about a year or two at like, least. Like, no, was that like uh, leaves falling on something? Um, golden leaves falling on fruitcake. Fruitcake. Like that. There we yeah. go. Yeah. I have it down here somewhere. I have an empty oh, bottle here. of it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, this is a pretty stellar list. And then to see a 20, what is that? Twenty, Yeah, 28 year from 77. Wow. Comment from Timothy Yatsko. Of course, the sole Isla offering is 53 again. Well, you know what? You're right. Uh, Isla whiskey is um, increasingly, increasingly um, hard and harder to come by, but I wouldn't jump to that conclusion just yet. Um, we might have some things, you know, in the near future by the end of the year uh, to take away from what we have here, but uh, don't. Uh, don't don't turn off the switch just yet, but no, but I, I am pretty excited about that one. 53.33 key dig success. Um, classic, you know, by description, refill hog said 12 years old. And yeah, I, th I think the interest in Isla whiskey overall is just is, is through the roof and has yeah, been. Yeah, it really long. is. Yeah. So um, anyway, I'm going to stop. I'm going to yeah. stop you guys. So we are going live in eight minutes with this out turn at smwsa.com. Reach out to us. It's going to be crazy, as we mentioned. Long your accounts online. I think some of these will probably go pretty quick. I'm just looking here, knowing. Uh, yeah, I think just the uniqueness of these is, is pretty remarkable. Some will go pretty quick, but always good to just sort of log in, check it out when it drops at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Otherwise, give us a call, and uh, you know our line gets a little busy. Our whole team is on, you know, hands on deck well, once we do drop the out turn, but. Um, if, if it's a uh, slow answering, it's just because there, there are a lot of members and it gets kind of crazy to upturn. So order online if you can too. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, Kevin Dutry, good to see you. My friend says, yeah, wow, so many age bottles. Very cool. It is cool. I think just as we get in, entering sort of holiday season, it's just a nice time to share a really special whiskey, I think with a lot of our family and friends. Um, I think for some of us, we've been away from our family and friends for, um, that's for for a long time yeah so it'll be nice to connect with some good whiskey so all right well this is fun that's my closing statement <laughs> all right well cheers all right cheers Jenna. thank you for all this right. thank you guys good luck and we'll see you next time all right bye